Hello friends, this video on electricity and circuits part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now, since we were talking about conductors and insulators, so let us look at a variety of examples of various substances and let's try to classify them as conductors and insulators. So if you talk about a key, a metal key, what do you think? Will it be a conductor or insulator? So metals are conductors of electricity. So this is going to be a conductor. If you talk about, uh, let's say, a glass bangle, as you see here. So what is glass? Glass is an insulator, it is a poor conductor of electricity. You talk about an iron nail, again iron is a metal and it is a good conductor of electricity. Talk about matchstick, it is made up of wood and wood is insulator. So therefore these wooden plank is also an insulator of electricity. You talk about rubber or anything made up of rubber, so that is also insulator. Talk about plastics, a hell lot of substances are made up of plastics and they are all insulators. You think of water, so what do you think, water is good conductor or poor conductor? So now there is something interesting with regards to water. Now when you talk about pure water or distilled water, so that is insulator. So if you talk about extremely pure water, so extremely pure water is nothing but the distilled water. So that distilled water is an insulator of electricity. But when you talk about the normal tap water, as you can see here, so this tap water contains a lot of salts, minerals and ions in it. And due to their presence, it becomes a good conductor of electricity. So, in general, when we talk about water, we mostly talk about the water which come from the taps and the bore wells which contain minerals and ions. And that is why we say that it is a good conductor of electricity. So, you would have noticed that your parents often tell you that do not touch electric circuits with wet hands. So, you are not advised to touch the open electric sockets with wet hands because the water is a good conductor of electricity. And that's how if you try touching a wire through which current is flowing, you might get an electric shock. You think of air. So air is again an insulator of electricity. So through air, electricity doesn't conduct. Think of another interesting example that is the human body. So our body itself is a good conductor of electricity. So that sounds surprising but that's, that's true and that is why we experience electric shock. So whenever we touch a current carrying naked wire with our hands, what happens is our body is good conductor. So current starts flowing through our body and that's how we experience electric shock. But if we are wearing uh, say a glo glo gloves made up of rubber and then we are touching a live wire, we will not get electric shock because rubber is a poor conductor of electricity. So it will block the current from flowing and that's how we will be protected from electric shock. So these are some examples of conductors and insulators. So now, since we saw that if we want to check if uh, any substance is a good conductor or a bad conductor, what we can do is we can just introduce it in a small circuit and then we can see whether the current is flowing through the circuit or not. Right? So that circuit itself acts as a tester. So it can test the conductivity of various substances. But how do we know that the tester which you are, we are using, that tester is perfect or not? So how do we test that tester circuit? So that this is how we do it. So this is our tester circuit where we have a bulb, we have a battery, we connect the bulb and the battery. And then we leave the, these two ends free. So how do we connect these two ends? These two ends we connect with that unknown substance. So where if that unknown substance is good conductor, then the bulb will blow. If that unknown substance is a poor conductor, the bulb will not blow. So that's the logic which we followed, right? How do we know that this tester is working fine? So for that purpose, what we do is we connect the free ends of the tester. So when we join the two free ends of the tester, the bulb should glow. So if the bulb is glowing, that means the tester is working because that means the current is flowing through the circuit. So now if we introduce some object which is a good conductor, in that case also the bulb should glow. But if we are introducing something which is an insulator, then it is quite obvious that the bulb will not glow because current will not be allowed to flow through the circuit. So this is how we can Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. 
Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.